Stefan Britweiser is a Frenchman who lived in his mother's attic, waited tables to make money, and is probably the most prolific art thief in history. Actually, he has stolen from over 200 museums, and before his capture, had amassed a collection of art worth more than $1.4 billion. To put that into context, it's almost unheard of to hear of an art thief that has stolen from more than 10 different places, but Stefan managed to steal from more than 200 museums, not including the churches and the art shows he stole from. Also, if you were to steal the three most valuable paintings right now, you would still be around half a billion dollars short of Stefan's collection. The most impressive thing about Stefan's thievery isn't the value. It's that the heist all took place during daylight and many times with guards and museum visitors in the same room as him. Also, to his credit, not a single time did he harm or threaten anyone. Stefan would simply blend into the crowd, slip the art into his clothes, and then slip out undetected. This is not because Stefan is some type of mastermind. Instead, he says he just simply went around lunchtime and used the old construction of museums to his advantage. Stefan knew that most museums cannot afford high-level security, therefore they utilize fake alarms and cameras to create the illusion of security. As for the actual guards, Stefan said it was best to go near lunchtime when they were hungry, tired, and changing shifts. Stefan would use the creaky wooden floors or echoey marble floors to listen to see if anyone was approaching, and when he couldn't do this, he had a girlfriend, Anne Catherine, who would act as his lookout for him. You might wonder why a man with over a billion dollars worth of art was broke and lived with his mom. This was because Stefan believed that stealing art for money was stupid, but stealing for love is ecstatic. Stefan would say that the art stirred him emotionally, and he would even sit and sob at the beauty of the art he stole. Stefan viewed his theft as many view adopting their pets. He believed that art deserved a loving home and when he would steal pieces, he would often restore them, sometimes to a higher quality than they were in the museums. He would also take great care to never damage the art during the theft, going as far as never rolling or folding paintings that he stole. He would even say it is inhumane to vandalize art. Stefan would not only steal paintings though. He would gather sculptures, instruments, gold, copper, silverware, and even weapons. Again, despite stealing weapons, he never brandished a weapon a single time. When asked if he ever armed himself for a theft, he would say, quote, to walk into a museum with a weapon would be disgusting. Now, police were not oblivious to Stefan's thefts, but they did not believe a single person could possibly act out this volume of crimes. The reality, though, was that for six years, Stefan was stealing on average one piece of art every two weeks, and at one point, he was even responsible for half of all stolen paintings inside France. It would be in Switzerland that his luck would begin to run dry. Stefan and his girlfriend would enter a museum and learn they were the only two visitors of the day. His girlfriend would beg him not to steal anything because of this, and to add to that, the museum was directly across the street from a police station. But Stefan inside the museum would become infatuated with the painting and attempt to steal it anyways. A guard immediately noticed and marched both Stefan and Anne to the police. While with the police, Stefan would convince them that this was his first theft and he would never attempt it again. Therefore, he was released with little to no punishment. Stefan would feel empowered because of this, but Anne wisely knew that this was the beginning of the end since the police now had his fingerprints. Anne would make Stefan promise to wear gloves from now on, and promise never to return to Switzerland. Unfortunately for both of them, Stefan preferred dexterity over protection and would also return to Switzerland. When he would return to Switzerland, he would attempt to steal from a museum that neighbored the first museum he got caught at. He would steal a bugle and proudly come home to Anne to show her. Anne found no amusement in this as he had broken the promise of never returning to Switzerland and told her that he didn't wear gloves during the theft. They would decide that they would return to the museum the next day and Anne would wipe away his fingerprints while he waited outside. When they got there, everything seemed to go to plan until Anne overheard a guest and the front desk worker calling the police on Stefan because they recognized him as one of the three visitors to the museum the day prior. Anne would attempt to exit the museum to warn Stefan, but by the time she got outside, he was already in police custody. Although, Anne would be able to slip away unnoticed. In custody, Stefan would admit to stealing the bugle and attempt to use the same narrative as the first time to get released, but police recognized him and kept him in custody. Police would then apply for an international search warrant on Stefan's home. Stefan knew his time was ticking down at this point, but he mainly worried about Anne and his mother. However, police would not allow him any form of communication. Police would show up to execute the search warrant on Stefan's room, which Stefan had arrogantly nicknamed Alibaba's Cave, due to the overflowing art pieces he had amassed. But to their amazement, they would find it empty, containing only a bed and not even the bugle that Stefan had already admitted to stealing. This was because unbeknownst to Stefan, when Anne slipped away after his arrest, she immediately called his mother and filled her in on everything. 
Stefan's mother would then gather all his stolen art and dump them in a canal near their home, burn the paintings, and toss various items into the woods. To the detriment of Stefan and his mother, walkers near the canal would notice the art inside the water and call police. Police would photograph the art, still not having linked it to Stefan, but since he was in custody, they decided to show it to him just in case. To their amazement again, Stefan confessed to stealing every single item. To further amaze the police, Stefan was only upset because the photos showed the art was damaged. He then asked where the paintings were. This is when police realized he had no idea his mother had dumped the art and burned the paintings. After Stefan realized what his mother did, he had a complete breakdown even had to be medicated and monitored to prevent his suicide. Stefan would never apologize or show any guilt for his crimes, he truly believed he was taking care and loving the art. Yet, since his crimes never involved harming anyone or threatening anyone, he was only sentenced to four years and his mother would get six months in jail. For Anne, Stefan would lie and say that she had no idea of the crimes, therefore she spent a single night in jail but would later face a few months as well. While Stefan was in jail, Anne would become pregnant and start a family with another man, so when he was released in 2005 at the age of 33, he found a new girlfriend and moved out of his mother's home. He remained crime-free for a few years and was banned from going anywhere that had art on display, but Stefan would soon relapse and steal a painting. He would go home and show his girlfriend the painting and tell her this was a one-time thing, I just missed art so much, but she wouldn't believe him, break up with him, turn him into police, and send him back to prison. He would be 44 when he saw freedom again, but in 2019, he again was arrested for the theft of Roman coins and other objects which were taken from museums in France and Germany. Stefan is currently incarcerated, and hasn't spoken on the subject of his most recent thefts. If you enjoyed this story and like other true crime and mysterious stories, hit the like and follow buttons, it really helps me out. Share this video with a friend, leave a comment, I post one to two times every single week, and with that being said, I'll see you next time.